Heat transfer, chapter six, lecture one, fundamentals of convection. So the, we see convection in everyday, uh, everyday life. Uh, we turn on the fan on a hot summer day to help cool our body. That moving air is convection. Uh, the higher the fan speed, the better we feel. We also see it with when we eat food. We stir our soup or blow on a hot slice of pizza to make it cool faster. The air on a windy day. Uh, feels much cooler than it actually is. So these kind of convection problems are what we're going to look at in this in this particular lecture. So conduction and convection are both require the presence of a material medium, but convection also requires fluid motion. Heat transferred through a solid is always by conduction. Heat transferred through a fluid is by convection in the presence of a bulk fluid and by conduction in the absence of it. So you have different types of uh, scenarios. You have what's known as forced convection where you have a fan blowing over a surface. The surface is at 50 degrees phi, the air is at 20 degrees C. So that's the one way you can cool a surface is by blowing air over it. You also have the fact that you can have what's called natural convection where the air itself can uh, as it gets approaches the surface of the, the hot uh, <clears throat> plate, it can uh, get warmed and then warm air rises and that takes away the, the heat as well. Now when you have no air currents, it's strictly conduction. Uh, that's a limiting case. Uh, uh, conduction therefore can be looked at as a limiting case of convection uh, corresponding when you don't have any currents at all. So how does it work in, when a, a fluid is sandwiched between two parallel plates? Uh, well, again, you you have so you have a hot plate and a cold plate, and you have fluid moving through it. You're going to have heat transfer through the fluid from the hot plate to the cool plate, uh, and the heat. So you're going to have uh, a convec convection kind of effect, and the the rate of heat transfer is much higher by convection than it is by conduction. In fact, the higher the fluid velocity, the higher rate of heat transfer. So what's the physical mechanism of convection? Convection, convection really uh, strongly depends on the fluid properties, the dynamic viscosity, the thermal conductivity, the density, specific heat, as well as the fluid velocity. It's typically modeled with what's known as uh, Newton's law of cooling, as we've seen before, shown here. This first equation is the uh, heat transfer rate per unit uh, area. Uh, and the second one is just the heat transfer rate uh, measured in watts. H here is the convection, convection heat transfer coefficient. Uh, that's generally determined experimentally. It, it's, uh, uh, it's more complicated uh, to do than it is for conduction. A sub S is the heat transfer surface area. And T sub S and T infinity are the temperatures of the surface and the fluid um, sufficiently far away from the surface. Part of the problem with uh, convection is that it is just the actions of a fluid itself. When a fluid comes in contact with the surface, so here we show a, this is a kind of like a uh, uh, blunt nose, uh, maybe a, a ship or an airplane, and you're blowing air over it. What happens at the surface is when the air comes in contact with the surface, it basically stops and you have that what's called a no-slip condition. Uh, this no-slip condition is basically the, the result of uh, the fluid viscosity. So here you see, for an example, if you're, if you're blowing air over a surface, uh, everything's fine up, up well above the surface. It doesn't change much, but as you get closer to the surface, it, it gets slower and slower when you get exactly at the surface it, it basically stops so you end up with this this uh, velocity profile so implication of that no slip condition is that the heat transfer from the solid surface to the fluid layer adjacent to the surface is by pure conduction since the fluid layer is motionless we can express this as follows um, so Q dot convection equals Q dot conduction and equals minus K of the fluid 
times the partial derivative of temperature with respect to y at the surface. And so this is evaluated when y equals zero at the surface. So we can use Newton's laws of cooling, and we can refine the, the heat, uh, convection heat transfer coefficient. So basically, we're, so we're, we're taking this equation, uh, plugging it in here, and then solving for, for h, for the h value. So the convection heat transfer coefficient in general varies along the flow direction. Uh, so we can take the average of the mean heat transfer coefficient by just taking the, the integral of the local one and integrating over the area. Now for one dimensional, it becomes just a one dimensional integral. So one number that's uh, commonly used uh, is what's called the salt number. Uh, this is done a lot in these kind of fluid problems is where you try to non-dimensionalize the governing equations and combine variables to group them together. So here, if you know, we have a convection equation, we have our, our which we can write as follows as, as, we, as we learned before. So if you take a ratio of the convection to conduction, uh, the delta T's cancel and you end up with these uh, quantities that are just properties of the, the the fluid layer. So this is what's known as the salt number, HL over K, where L is what's known as the characteristic length of the the uh, the fluid. Uh, so it could be the thickness, like L here, as it, as it flows through uh, fluid layer. And uh, so, so the, this the salt number res represents the uh, enhancement of heat transfer to a fluid as a result of convection relative to conduction across the same layer. In other words, the larger the salt number, the more effective is the convection. An assault number of one uh, would represent heat transfer but purely by conduction only. <clears throat> so let's take a look at example 6-1. So here we have uh, during the flow of air at at 20 degrees C over a plate, uh, maintained at a constant temperature of 160 degrees C. Uh, the dimensionless prof temperature profile within the air layer is determined to be given by the following equation, where A here is a constant, it's 3200 uh, per meter. So here, uh, we want to find uh, the uh, heat flux, uh, we want to determine the heat flux on the plate surface and the convection heat transfer coefficient. So first of all, the properties. So uh, we need to determine the thermal conductivity of air at the film uh, at the surface. So basically, we're going to take an average of the plate plus the the height above the plate. So we get 90 degrees C. So if we look in table A15 at 90 degrees C, and, and table I just copied a clip of, of table A15 here. It shows uh, varying temperatures, but the one we're interested in is 90 degrees. That's what we found up here. So if we come across there's varying uh, different quantities here, the one we want is the thermal conductivity, 0 0.03024. So here's our equation we were given. Uh, so here we can solve this this equation for for T sub y. And now we can take a uh, we want to find the uh, uh, Q dot. We take a derivative of T with respect to Y. So if we take this derivative, um, this is a constant, so it drops out. Uh, so we got a constant times an exponential, so the, the minus A comes down and multiplies the exponential, like here. And then we uh, set this when Y equals zero, this term goes away, so we're left with this term here. So we can plug in our values. TS is, of the surface is 160. T at infinity is, is 20. Uh, a is 3200, so we can calculate this this partial derivative value, and then finally we can plug it in here, and we can find what Q dot is, because we know what K is. We were we were we looked that up here, the value here, so we get 1.35 times 10 to the fourth watts per square meter, and finally we can find what the H value is. Uh, we can solve solve the equation for H. Uh, K, we know we found this value, and this is the temperature difference. So our H value here is 96.8 watts per meter squared Kelvin.
all right. see you in the next lecture.